Hi, in this webcast we're going to be looking at tracking rules execution in a .NET application. Uh, it's part of the BizTalk 2010 Light and Easy series. So my name is Alan Smith, I work as developer, trainer, mentor and evangelist for a company called Knowit Consulting in Stockholm. So the session, we're going to have a brief introduction, we're going to look at needs uh, for using uh, tracking on their business rules engine. We're then going to look at implementing an interface called iRuleSet Tracking Interceptor and then uh, a brief summary. Okay, so what we're going to look at is uh, being able to actually intercept uh, and track what's going on when these business rules execute. A couple of scenarios uh, where you may want to do this. You may be uh, going in and building stuff and debugging stuff, and you don't get the uh, expected values when you actually execute the rules. So you may want to say, okay, well, which rules uh, fired, which rules didn't fire, how were we getting the actual uh, values out uh, when we did this, and how we were, well, was the rules engine basically evaluating that claim? What you can also use this for is maybe auditing purposes. You want to actually have a, a record of what rules fired and what rules didn't fire. Um, so if you get an expenses claim and it gets automatically approved and it, you think it shouldn't have been done, you can actually go in uh, and look in the audit trail and see, okay, why was this uh, approved? Uh, why was this actual uh, decision taking place? So what we're going to look at is making some simple changes here to be able to actually intercept what's going on in the rules engine. So what I'm going to do is to add a, a rules tracking interceptor uh, to this application. So first of all, I'm going to add a new class. And I'll just call this uh, rules tracking logger and drop it onto the project there. And what I'm also going to do here is using Microsoft.RulesEngine. And the actual class that I'm going to be, uh, or the actual interface that I'm going to be implementing here is going to be the I I rule set tracking interceptor and if I uh, implement that interface in here you can see that I get a, a bunch of uh, methods uh, that have been uh, implemented here so what I'm going to do is to add a string builder and drop on a constructor just to initialize that and what I can do is just basically put stuff into this uh, string builder uh, as the uh, rules are executing and we'll get uh, an actual uh, text uh, record uh, of this. So what I'm going to do with this uh, string builder is use it to just show what's going on when this gets called. So if I do uh, builder.append and I can drop in the actual method name here and cars return that line feed on that and then this, this code here I can just basically replace in all of these uh, these other codes here. So we're not going to be throwing exceptions. We're going to be uh, adding the uh, the method names to the builders like that. And then I'm just going to copy paste in the appropriate method name. So what I can do here is generate a new uh, rules tracking logger and then I can actually call this uh, in the execute method I've got the option actually to pass in a tracking interceptor so I'll pass in logger there and we also need to get the information to the user interface somehow so I'm going to go back here just generate another label uh, below the actual uh, result label called uh, tracking. Uh, I don't really need to uh, use a large font for this. Uh, we'll change the color to black. And then back in the, uh, the C sharp file after we've executed this we can also set LBL tracking dot content to be equal to logger dot builder dot to string. Control F5 and we should get a record of the methods that are being called when we actually uh, run this rule. So let's take uh, our old favourite of technologies uh, buying books. And you can see what's happening. We've got the uh, set tracking configuration, uh, track rule set engine association, track fact activity, track uh, agenda update. And then we've got these condition evaluations running, uh, various agenda updates, uh, condition uh, evaluations and so on. And also uh, track uh, rule firing. So what I want to do is to add a bit of detail on this, so you can actually see what's going on in those various methods. So going back to the actual um, rules tracking logger, I'm going to modify these strings just to add a bit of a detail. So stuff that we're going to be interested in, uh, we can basically take the um, 
rule firing. So what I'm going to do here is just do string dot format. And what we also want to put in is the actual name of the rule. So that's going to uh, tell us uh, which actual uh, rule was firing there. And let's also take uh, the uh, condition evaluation. That one should be uh, interesting as well. So we'll also take uh, a string format here. What I can basically say for the expression is And it also gives us uh, the uh, result, so that's going to be interesting, is equal to... And here what I can put in is the left value, test expression, uh, the uh, right value, uh, and the result. And that's going to hopefully tell us uh, what's, uh, what's happening there. OK, so, so with those two values set, I should be able to do a Control f 5 again and go in here and just basically expand this window a bit because we're going to be getting a bit more data in here. And let's take Sales um, Travel and just process that. Requires approval. And you can see all of the actual um, decisions that were being made in this uh, particular rule. Now here we can see uh, that we were basically tracking these condition evaluations. So we basically had department is equal to uh, tech and that came through as being uh, false. And then we got the department is equal to sales, uh, that came through as being true. Category is equal to travel, that came through as being true. And then we got the uh, expenses amount is uh, less than um, 250. We're comparing 450 to uh, 250 and that came through as being false. So that basically meant that the rule didn't fire and the only rule that fired was our default rule which was the uh, requires approval. Now if we decrease the amount uh, you can see here that it's co comparing the amounts to 250. If I take 200 for the amount, click on process, you can see that uh, it has changed here. When this condition was evaluated, it compared 200 to 250. Then this condition was true, uh, and basically that meant that the um, rule fired for requires approval fired. Now that requires approval will always fire, and that was setting the value uh, to uh, requires approval. Now, uh, afterwards, uh, the actual sales approval has been fired because this, uh, if you remember from the previous webcast, this had a higher priority, so this uh, executes first. The sales approval uh, uh, rule fires, and it basically assigns uh, the value of approved to the, uh, the actual uh, status of the claim. So using this, we've basically got two advantages. Firstly, if I'm building an application here, and I'm going in and saying, well, what happens if it's a uh, technologies claiming for travel? What's going to be evaluated there? What happens uh, when technologies uh, claim for books? What gets evaluated there? I've got a really detailed uh, understanding here of what's going on in this rules engine, how all of this stuff is firing. Also, uh, if you're doing something that's worth uh, a lot of money, maybe, um, you know, uh, loan approvals at a bank, uh, you can actually audit all of this stuff and say, okay, when this loan came through, if we think we got an error in the decision, what conditions were evaluated here? And it's very, very simple to actually build up and intercept this data just by providing uh, an implementation, a class that implements this uh, rule set tracking uh, interceptor there. So the uh, summary for this one. Tracking rules execution is going to be very useful for a number of scenarios. If you want to actually debug and see exactly what's going on in the rules engine, you can uh, use it for debugging. And I was actually uh, writing it out to the user interface, but you could equally use uh, debug.writeline or trace.writeline to actually write out what's going on as the rules get executed. You could also use it for generating an audit trail. So when each expenses claim gets approved, I could actually store the uh, actual uh, tracing information into a durable store. So that could be actually uh, viewed later on when we want to actually see why decisions uh, were made. And that could lead to us making modifications and improvements in the actual uh, business rules policy. Implementing the iRule set tracking interceptor is fairly simple to do. It's a fairly simple interface. We can just provide the implementation we want on that and then choose uh, what kind of information we're going to be uh, tracking. And we do have quite comprehensive uh, rule tracking information. I just showed a few of these simple uh, bits of information that you can pull out, but you can actually can get fairly detailed information about what's going on in the uh, business at rules engine. This uh, webcast was in a, one in a series of webcasts hosted at cloudcasts.net in the BizTalk 2010 Light and Easy webcast series.